Hello and welcome to another Q&A. If you're keeping count or you can read, you'll know that this is Q&A 12. As always, I'm going to answer questions that you guys have posed to me in previous videos from this series. If you yourself want to leave me a question, you want me to answer one of your questions in these videos, you will have to leave it in the form of a comment in this video or one of the others in the Q&A series and you'll have to start your comment with the word question. First question from Bjibs. I've had my dreads for about 12 months now and I just wanted to know, will they ever grow longer? It seems they are getting shorter. Also the top of my head gets crazy itchy but does not flake. It just itches like mad and the skin is very pink. I currently use tea gel shampoo twice a week and ACV rinse every month. Any tips would be the best. Thanks so much. Cheers. Okay, so two questions from Bjibs. I will start off with the length one. Most people will find that their dreadlocks do not grow when they are young. In fact, they will just shrink. I have recently completed a video on this uh, entitled Shrinkage and I will put a link to that down in the uh, info box and also you can click here if you are watching on a computer. The hair that you have at the start, the initial hair, the hair that you start your dreadlocks with, that will shrink up because it gets tighter and tighter as the dreads mature and that is called shrinkage so until all of the existing hairs shrunk up and tightened then you won't see a lot of growth. That is the sort of maturing process still happening. Once the dreads are fully matured they will not be able to tighten up anymore and the only movement will be coming from the scalp. So there's a process, uh, first they shrink and shrink and shrink as they are tightening faster than they're growing and then there's a point where they're growing as fast as they're tightening when they don't seem to grow at all and then when they're fully tightened and matured then they will start to grow at a constant rate. But this is all covered in detail in the shrinkage video that you can find down here. Uh, your next question about the scalp being pink and irritable, then you will want to do something about that. Um, first thing I would do would be to try a different shampoo. You say you're using tea gel and tea gel works fine for some, but different shampoos work for different people. There's, there's no one perfect dreadlock shampoo that works for everyone perfectly. But if I was having a pink sore scalp, I wouldn't continue what I was doing because there would obviously you know, there's something wrong. First of all, I would do a soak. Soak my hair in um, some nice essential oils. Either soak my scalp in rosemary tea or, you know, deep clean with some rosemary essential oils. Make a spray mist with some rosemary essential oils in it. Or tea tree. Tea tree is good for your scalp too. But a nice long soak with some essential oils should soothe the scalp and then it'll allow you to start from scratch um, trying other things. You can just whip up one of those uh, spray mists that I have shown how to make in one of my previous videos. I'll put a link to that here that you can click or a link down here and you can make one of those up with some rosemary and tea tree and try spraying that on your scalp and seeing if it helps soothe the soreness. If you have a particular sort of irritable, itchy scalp, you can try the peppermint because that is sort of a, a cooling spray. But you have to play around with it because there's, there's no sort of instant um, cure irritated pink scalp, I'm afraid. Each person's head is going to be different and different things are going to be better compatible with different people. 67 Hippie Love asks, question, I seemed twist and rip my dreads a little too tightly and they are very they around an inch but the majority of them are small my questions is as they mature and tighten will I be in danger of my dreads breaking I don't crochet hook or palm rolling as they are tight enough I won't brush them out and start over um I'm not in entirely sure what the problem here is. I'm going to assume that you mean that the dreadlocks are thin. Uh, in your question you said that you feel like you twist and ripped your dreadlocks too tightly and now they're really thin and you're scared that they will break over time. I would be surprised if you'd managed to twist and rip your hair too tightly. I you said that you don't plan on crocheting or palm rolling because the dreads are tight enough. We'll see what you say after you've started washing them a few times. I think you just have some uh, young dreads nervousness. A lot of people get young dreads and then they can't stop playing with them and worrying about them. When, you know, dreadlocks are going to take months and months. If you're going to sit and worry about your dreads for months and months, then uh, 
well, you know, you just shouldn't. Uh, without seeing the dreads, I wouldn't really be able to comment much more on your specific case because I'm afraid I don't really understand what you've been trying to say, but I would imagine that your dreadlocks will be completely fine as long as you leave them alone for the required amount of time. 67 Hippie Love, please feel free to leave me a comment or send me a message if um, you have any more worries or want any more help, but um, I'm a little lost with your question. Sorry. Purple Nomi, question, hello, I'm thinking about starting dreadlocks, I'm just wondering what condition should I have my hair in before starting them for a twist and rip method, thank you. If you go on lazydreads.com and then click on the sidebar, um, I'm not sure which side that's going to be on, but it's, it's on the right hand side, and there is a thing that you can click which says pre-dreads information, and then you click on there and you go in there, and it says uh, preparing for dreadlocks and that goes into detail about how your hair should best be before starting dreads but basically you're going to want to stop conditioning your hair as soon as possible because conditioned hair is not particularly dread friendly uh, you're going to want to swap to your residue free shampoo to get your hair used to it and your scalp used to it and make sure that that is compatible with your hair because as was seen in my first question uh, someone was using tea gel shampoo which works fine for some people and apparently not for others. So you want to make sure that you've already found a shampoo that works for you so that you don't get your dreads and have the added irritation of a shampoo that is not working for you. And you're going to want to wean back on your washing because some people will get away with washing their normal straight hair as often as they want. Uh, when I had non-dreaded hair I'd wash my hair every day if I wanted to. Uh, now with dreadlocks I will only wash my hair every second to third day and it, you want to decide how often you're going to be washing your hair because you want to get your hair used to it. And you're going to want to slowly back into it. So if you've decided you want to wash your hair every four days instead of every one day, you want to slowly back off to it. You don't want to jump from every first day to every fourth day because you're going to get really greasy and irritated, nasty hair. Okay. Uh, there's more on that. If anyone's interested about how often to wash dreads, and you can click here and there's a video about it, or you can click down here and uh, I'll leave a link. Uh, or how often dreads should be washed. But basically, uh, to sum up, if you're preparing to start dreads, you just want non-conditioned but clean hair. Jessica Thompson, question, how do you take care of your dreads after swimming with them in a pool, lake, or ocean? I doubt I would soak them in a hot tub because those are gross to begin with. I like to exercise in the water and I want to know if I were to swim every day and get them wet in either a pool, lake, or ocean, what would you recommend other than making sure they completely dry? My ends are not blunted, they are wispy, so the water runs right out of them and they take little time to dry. You can swim with dreads um, uh, in any of those places. Ocean is best because salt water is good for dreads and helps them tighten and it makes the loose hairs dry and more likely to knot up. And then lake is just, you know, normal water. Uh, the least favourite, well, my least favourite place of putting my dreadlocks is in a chlorinated pool. Because chlorine makes dreadlocks go all kind of, uh, it's just sort of tacky feeling. As soon as I've been swimming in a pool, I really want to wash my dreads and get rid of that feeling. Uh, but you can do it with young dreads. If you're going to be swimming every day, they're going to get, you know, quite messy. Getting them really wet, it'd be like washing them every day. But you can view it as either your hair gets messy slowly from washing every few days, or you get the messiness all out at once with um, the swimming. But I wouldn't recommend swimming with really, really young dreads because that might soften them more than you really want and make them too messy. Uh, with young dreads, I recommend you know waiting maybe five days, seven days before the first wash and being gentle. With swimming, I would maybe wait a month or so. I mean, it's best to wait as long as possible because it is going to kind of pull out a lot of loose hair. It's going to be sort of more aggressive to them than a normal gentle wash, especially if you're exercising in the pool. But mainly because if you're going in a chlorinated pool, you're going to have to be quite rough with the rinsing because it takes a lot of rinsing and squeezing to get all of the chlorine out. Salt water is different. You can you can soak them in salt water when they're younger, but chlorine is kind of... Well, you'll see, and those who have swum with dreadlocks in chlorinated water will know. I have personally been recommended and seen a lot of people recommend, but I haven't tried it, but I will be trying it this vacation. Um, to use tea gel shampoo to get rid of chlorine, apparently that is quite good at removing chlorine from dreads. 
Unless you are the person who left the first question in this uh, Q&A who is having problems with T-Gel, but I have it on good authority that T-Gel is highly recommended for washing your dreads after swimming in a pool. I personally wouldn't recommend uh, washing your hair uh, swimming every single day with dreads just because they take so long to dry, but if you have enough time in a day to dry them every day, you know, go ahead. There's nothing special about washing them afterwards, you just have to keep washing until all the chlorine is out. Moon Lead Kitty 666 or Moon Lead Kitty 666. Question. When I lay down at night my dreads kind of itch at my scalp a lot and I find I need to push them all around until I find a spot where they don't bug me. Any tips for that? I find that my dreads are really annoying at night if they're ready for a wash. So if I'm washing my hair every two days, every three days or whatever, if I go a day over um, then when I try and sleep that night they will be itchy and irritable. So my first uh, sort of suggestion would be to watch how you're washing them or maybe try a different soap. I personally, when I'm using a soap that works for me and I'm washing them thoroughly and I keep to my schedule so I don't miss a day washing them, then I can sleep on them fine and they won't be itchy. But if I don't have my right soap or if I'm having to use a shower that sucks so I can't rinse properly, then I have problems. I also find, or you know, I also do, I, I sleep with the, with a fan. Uh, so I sleep with my head over the side of the bed and I have a fan on my head. And I have that mainly because my hair keeps my head really warm. And I, I like to sleep with a fan on because otherwise I just get too warm. And my hair does get irritable when it gets really warm and uncomfortable. But you can also try, as I previously mentioned to someone else in this Q&A, uh, try making a cooling spray or similar, uh, which I've shown in one of my previous videos, which you can click here to find or click down here. It'll still be down there as the dreadlock spray mist. And you basically just make up a mist with water and an essential oil of your choice. Uh, the ones I've been recommending are peppermint, which has a sort of cooling, tingling feeling. Or if it's specifically your scalp, you can try rosemary, which will be good if you're having sort of uh, dandruffy type problems, or tea tree just for general scalp care. But what you may find will help you is uh, also deep cleaning the hair. After a while, even if you're using uh, a good shampoo and a good schedule, you can find that it's just not cutting it anymore because over time residue is going to build up really slowly and going to have a nice deep clean which you can find linked to here how to do or down here again if you're watching on a mobile device a deep clean is going to strip everything away that's in dreads leave you with just scalp and hair and it'll sort of wipe the slate clean and make them soft and nice and maybe you'll find that they are less irritable at night if you're still having problems uh, please contact me again and we shall look at it further those are all my questions for today for Q&A 12. Thank you for watching. Again, any questions, please leave them in the comment section starting your comment with the word question. You can find me on Twitter at lazy underscore dreads. You can find all my guides and things on lazydreads.com and you can join in on facebook.com forward slash lazydreads. Goodbye.